Hey guys, it's Xan Shadow, and welcome to my newest Let's Play series, something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, uh, actually. Uh, this is Devil Survivor Overclocked, uh, part of the Shin Megami Tensei series, which is a long-running, very strange, and very wide-reaching RPG series from Japan, obviously, if you haven't uh, listened to the title of the game. Um, Shin Megami Tensei is definitely more famous for the Persona games in the, uh, in the West, and just in general for the main series which, like, involves post-apocalyptic stuff and stuff like that. And both games have very different, um, sort of, uh, feels to them. And Devil Survivor being an offshoot of the main series, but not being connected to Persona, actually, I feel like is a very good game to introduce people to the Shin Megami Tensei universe at large. The Persona games are a lot more popular in the West because they're generally a lot more accessible, but... A lot of people find the mainline games to be a lot deeper and more uh, engaging because they sort of uh, they cover deeper themes, darker themes, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Devil Survivor, I find, is the perfect compromise in that uh, way, where it has all the character focus and the accessibility that people would expect from the Persona games, you know, stuff like uh, 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 smoother fusion, you know, not quite as stiff of a difficulty curve, stuff like that. But uh, to satisfy the more hardcore Shin Megami Tensei fans, it has a lot of the same themes as the original uh, couple of games, you know, it's still very dark, still a lot going on, a very rich story. So this is, I think, one of the best ways to introduce uh, someone to the Shin Megami Tensei franchise, you know, there's still plenty of difficulty, so you'll get used to that. It's a very deep game, and there's a lot of different elements in this game that'll make it very accessible to anybody who's even dabbled mm -hmm. in various RPGs in the past. So if you've played Fire Emblem, you'll know what's going on. If you've played Pokemon, you'll have a general idea as what's going on. If you've played any general RPG, you know, you'll mm -hmm. have, there's something Isn't familiar familiar here for everybody who's ever played an RPG, which makes it a great jumping on point for something as eclectic and as uh, sort of obscure as Shin Megami Tensei. Now, this uh, game has full voice acting, which the original did not. Devil Survivor Overclocked is a 3DS re-release of the original Devil Survivor, which came out in on the normal DS sometime in the 2000s. I can't remember the specific date. But this re 3DS remake uh, adds some extra content, although we won't be seeing that until the end of the game, as well as adds full voice acting, which is probably its biggest at, um, addition to the series. Um, so, uh, actually, if you, um, I think Atlas said at one point that Devil it's Survivor Overclocked time. has the most, uh, voice time. acting that they'd ever recorded for any game at that point, so, yeah, surprising that the 3DS, uh, uh, game, this little 3DS game that came out only a few months after launch has more, uh, voice acting than, uh, both of the Persona games, you know, I think, uh, Catherine, pr maybe, you know, it's just, this game... It's the, for me, I look at it as the little game that could, you know. This is uh, the game I've played the most on my 3DS, although I wouldn't say it's the best 3DS game. Um, so I've played this game for a really uh, long time. I love it to death, and I'm just really excited to show it to you guys, because I haven't seen a quality a Devil Survivor Overclocked LP on YouTube yet, so hopefully I bring the first one. Um, now, I know a lot of people don't like it when uh, I talk over... Um, cutscenes, but just to explain the general gist of the game, I feel like I need to. Um, uh, later on, though, I feel like I'm probably going to spend most of the time riffing on uh, the voice acting and on the dialogue uh, new, the, the same way I sort of did for my new Blood LP, and if you haven't watched that, go check that out, because that's another fantastic Atlas game that people tend to overlook. Uh, but this beginning part right here just sets up a lot of uh, background information that will be explored later in the game, so don't worry about this, you're not missing anything too much. And yes, state your name, son of man. Uh, the design here is uh, remarkably similar to the design for the original uh, main character for Persona 3, although I don't know if that's a reference or if it was done intentionally. Um, you can enter your name in here. You've got your first name, your last name, and your nickname. Um, the... For me, I put my first name Ted and my last name Weezen for my normal names, and those are like your official names that people will say when they're talk. what certain characters will say when you're talking to, but your nickname is something that will pop up like on all of the, um, it'll pop up on all of the menus, and it's the name that your two uh, main companions will uh, ref ref 
refer reference you as throughout the rest of the game. So uh, the one that you should be thinking about the most there is your nickname, because that's the one that you're going to be seeing the most often. Also, you, as you notice, I'm jumping back and forth between uh, screens here a lot, and that's because uh, Devil Survivor Overclocked is sort of an odd entry, uh, odd 3DS game in that most of the most of the action takes place on the bottom screen. So for a good, uh, I'd say 70% of this uh, playthrough, you're going to be seeing the setup that I have right here, which is the bottom screen. Because uh, during these dialogue sections right here, there's either going to be like a red texture on the top of the screen, or there's just going to be nothing there. So it'll just be black. So here, uh, like when it's just dialogue and there's black on the top screen, I'm zooming in on the bottom so you can see what's going on. But uh, as you saw earlier, you know, the, top, the intro movie was on the top screen in the 3D screen, so I showed that and there was nothing going on the bottom. And there are a few sections where they do stuff with the two screens vertically. And at some points when we actually get into combat, there will be times when like uh, statistical data will be on the top screen. I'll edit the I'll edit the footage so that it's a little bit cleaner to see because you know it's odd to have you know the statistical data be on the bigger screen. So I'll edit it so that it looks nice later on. But we don't have any fights in this first uh, part. This is just you know uh, set up for the most part. We've got Atsuro and Yuzu here pickering like brother and sister, which I love. If there's one thing that I really love about Devil Survivor Overclocked in general, I, I mean probably I might just refer to it as just Devil Survivor or just Overclocked. It, I, I'll switch between the two, just so you know by the head. But one of the things I love best about Overclocked is the character interactions, especially between uh, Atsuro and Yuzu, because you really do get a sense of their friendship and of their friendship with the main character uh, due to their dialogue. You know, they argue and they bicker, but they still really do care about each other, and their relationship is a lot deeper than friends, or you know, they... they it, there's a lot of nuance going on there. Uh, also, I'm sure you've noticed by this point that, yes, we do have dialogue choices in this game. Uh, you know, sometimes you can change, uh, you can choose what, uh, what your main character will say when people ask you questions and stuff. Now, for this first day, the day before, you don't really have to worry too much about your dialogue choices, you know, it's just, event, you'll just be led forward in the, in the script naturally anyway, it's mostly just a but thou must situation for the most part. Uh, later on, however, your dialogue choices will have a very important impact in the game, but there's never anything like the Mass Effect uh, Paragon Renegade meter or the KOTOR uh, dark side, light side meter, or, you know, any one of those alignment bars like that. Uh, your dialogue choices doesn't really affect, like, any sort of alignment, but they will, uh, saying yes or no to certain things will activate or not activate certain events later on. I'll get more into the depth of, depths of that, uh, as we go on into the game, but for the most part, things are pretty simple for the most part. We're just sort of listening to, uh, some exposition here. Uh, basically, our cousin in Naoya, who lived with us for a while for some reason, uh, called us over to Shibuya. Um, oh, yeah, this game takes place in Tokyo and references a lot of Japanese stuff if you're not familiar with that. Uh, Shibuya, I think, is a district in Tokyo or something like that. I'm not entirely sure how they set it up over there, but he dropped these uh, comp things off with Yuzu, and Yuzu gave them to us. And Atsuro, being our resident computer nerd, wants to hack into them. Uh, the interesting thing about the comp is that, well, it's, uh, they say that it's called communication player here. In the original Shimagami Tensei games, the doodads that they had that summoned their demons were also called comps, but in like the official artwork there were these weird like computer thingies that they had mounted to their arms and stuff like that. And in this case they're, you know, DS's, so, you know, the, the name already should give you an idea of what these things are supposed to do. And looks like our comp can check email, although I don't know how they can do that unless there's like a Wi-Fi hotspot going on here, so that's already odd. Anyway, this is the Laplace mail. Uh, I try to scroll through as slowly as possible so you guys can read this sort of stuff, but if I'm going too fast, you can always just pause the video and read it for yourself. But anyway, yeah, that's odd. The email is listing off stuff that hasn't happened yet. That's odd. Huh. Eh, oh well, I guess that's not too important. Um, yeah, uh... 
even though there's three uh, different dialogue uh, points choices there, uh, every single one will just uh, re uh, give the same general reaction from Yuzu. Sometimes the uh, dialogue itself will be a little bit different, but in this first section, at the very least, your dialogue will just um, it'll just move forward the plot without really any um, without your choices really making any impact. Your choices will be important later on, though. When whenever we do come up to an essential choice, I will make sure to point it out to you. Because this playthrough is going to uh, lay out the way for you to get access to all five different endings at the end of the game, as well as having access to every single character. So this is as close to a 100% guide as I can possibly do. You know, so once I get to the once we get to the very end of the playthrough, we'll have access to all the different endings, to all the different uh, characters, etc., etc., etc. So, but however, in order to do that, you do have to do a very specific set of uh, decisions. So uh, make sure to follow my decisions if you want to get access to all of that by the um, end. So yeah. Although if you do want the full experience of playing this game, I recommend playing it blind and making all of your decisions on your own. But that's just what I think. Anyway, this is the map screen. This is the only time I'm going to be showing the map screen with both uh, screens on top. Because the top screen is just a map of the Yamano Yamanoto Yamamoto line, I think is how it's pronounced. It's only just a map of that, and you'll see a couple of dots up top, and that's not really all that important. All of the important stuff here is on the bottom screen. Anywhere where there's that little uh, triangle with a dot on it there, that's somewhere you can talk to a person, or an, an important character at the very least. Like, uh, Atsuro will be the green one, Yuzu will be the pink one, um, etc, etc, etc. Um, you press the uh, X button to go into the comp menu, which is basically, you know, your menu screen uh, for anybody who's played uh, an RPG before. Uh, once we unlock access to it, you can mess with your uh, teams here. You can look at various stuff here. Uh, there's always access to the settings uh, list and also the titles, which I'll explain when they become relevant. And you can also save. Uh, if you look at the top screen, you've got my level 99 file up there. All of those characters' artworks are filled in. And on the bottom screen, we've got this new file where all the characters our artwork is blacked out. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, uh, whenever you beat a, a game and get an ending, that corresponding artwork will fill in. So if I get Atsuro's ending, uh, his artwork will be filled in when I beat the game, and then doing a new game plus will um, allow you to get all the different endings, and then you can fill in all the artwork as you go along. Uh, there's five different endings up there to up uh, five different endings to get in this game despite there being like a nine or eight or nine characters on the top screen don't worry some characters share an ending so don't worry about uh, that too much there's not like ten endings to this game that would be ridiculous anyway up uh, here where I chose to talk to this odd dude is the first example of part of devil survivor which really gives it a lot of its replay value is that there's lots and lots and lots of dialogue scenes in this game but obviously you you can't see all of them through just one playthrough. You're going to have to do New Game pl Plus. Uh, like here, we have the option to look at the uh, what, look at what the old odd dude was doing, or look at what Atsuro was doing. Thing is, we only get access to do one. Every time you start an event, which is when you're on the map screen and you choose a, a person to talk to, that starts an event, and at the end of the event, the clock will move over 30 minutes. Like, at the first scene, it was 5.30 when we ended it, and now it's going to be sick and now well it's 1530 I should say sorry and now it's 1600 and the odd uh, once this odd dude starts rambling about the Tower of Babel and stuff like that blah 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 nobody cares about you even Joe evangelicist peoples. See, now that that event's over, it's 1630, so yeah. Time moves forward in in 30 minute chunks, even if the conversations are only like 10 minutes long. So yeah. Don't know how that happens, but you know, this is kind of a, you know, relaxing first day, you know, it's just like, we, yeah, we got the weird computer things, but hey, th free 3DS, I'm cool with that, and you know, there's creepy religious dudes preaching about, but you know, that's just a normal day, uh, if you live in the big city, you walk around the corner and there's some dude claiming it'll be the apocalypse or something. Uh, I could have been mean to Yuzu there, but, you know, I need to be nice to boobs, I mean, Yuzu, because, you know, it's very good to be, uh, to be polite and supportive to your boobs, I mean, friends, because you never know when they'll give you a boob job, I mean, um, uh, when they'll support you in your penis, I mean, 
in your troubles. I'm not always looking at Yuzu's boobs. What would ever give you that idea? I'm doing the shifty eyes things, but obviously since I'm just a disembodied voice, you can't hear that. So, um, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, and which I probably shouldn't mention since we're just at the end of the game, is that I love this game's music, but I assume I'll just talk about that when next part comes around. But anyway, uh, yeah, that, that, that email was talking about something bad happening in Aoyama, and apparently now you lives there, so next time on Let's Play Devil Survivor Overclocked, despite my misgivings, I'm gonna go check on Naoya, because goddamn but thou must. I'm Exxon Shadow, and I'll see you guys later.